everyone, I'm Katie and welcome to my channel, Biology by Katie. In the first series of videos, I'm going to be going through the AQA A-Level Biology specification topic by topic. I really hope you find these videos useful, interesting and easy to follow. If you do have any requests or recommendations for me, please just leave me a comment. Starting off with topic 1.1, monomers and polymers. Let's break down these terms to see what they actually mean. First up, we have this term mono. When translated from Greek, this gives us the term one or alone. Therefore, we use this word as a prefix in biology to describe the single monomer units that make up large polymers. So here would be a visual representation of what we mean by something existing on its own or as a single unit. The next term we have here is poly. And when translated again from Greek, this one means many or multiple. Now you might have seen this prefix used in many different words before, but in biological terms, it refers to a molecule that is made up of multiple monomer units. So here we have the illustration of our polymer and we can see that it is made up of multiple repeating single units. Now it is important to remember that anything that is defined as a polymer must have single monomer units bonded together chemically. So they must have had to undergo a physical and chemical change in order to become this new polymer unit. So we have mono meaning one or single and we have poly meaning many or multiple. And therefore we can deduce that polymers are multiple units that are made up from monomers or single units. Why is this relevant? Well, it is believed that there are around 8.7 million species living on this earth. So the variety of living organisms is beyond measure. Now, the fascinating thing about all this is that all of these 8.7 million organisms are predominantly made up of the same four organic polymers. Yep, the chemical basis of life consists of just four things. Now you might already be familiar with some of these structures, but these four molecules here are the polymer units that provide the basis of life for all living organisms. First up, we have carbohydrates. Next, we have lipids. Then we have proteins. And finally, we have our nucleic acids. So these four substances here make up the biochemical basis for life. So that means all living things on Earth have these molecules in one way or another. Now, we also refer to these as macromolecules, which means they are molecules containing a very large number of atoms. So they are large polymer molecules. As mentioned in the first slide, all four of these polymer molecules are built up of smaller monomer units. Now, this process is called polymerization. The first type of reaction that we are going to look at here is condensation polymerization, where two monomer units are joined together, forming a new bond. As this new bond is formed, a single molecule of water is released. Here we have two single nucleotides. So these are our monomers. As soon as they're joined together, they now make up a polymer. In this case, we have a nucleic acid. So this could be DNA or RNA or the start of DNA or RNA. So we can see here as a linkage has been formed between our two separate molecules. In the case of nucleotides, this bond will be a phosphodiester bond, but we will look at that later on in the course. Um, there has been the removal of a single water molecule, so two hydrogens and one oxygen. Every time a new bond is formed via condensation polymerization, so that is every time a new monomer is added to the chain, a single molecule of water is removed each time. So if we add six nucleotides, we will have six molecules of water removed. If we add three, we will remove three water molecules and so on. The interesting thing about condensation polymerization is that it is actually a reversible reaction. So we can revert back to our original monomer molecules by a process called hydrolysis. So hydrolysis is another Greek term. If we break it up, the term hydro means water. You might already be familiar with that one. And the term lysis means to break down or unwind. So hydrolysis is literally the method of breaking bonds using water molecules. 
So we can see here we started off with a nucleic acid that had three nucleotides. We introduced a water molecule that broke up the phosphodiester bond and then we ended up with one breaking away. And then when we introduce a second water molecule that breaks the final phosphodiester bond and we end up with three separate monomer units, so three separate nucleotides. So just remember that in the same way a single molecule of water is released per new bond formed during condensation, a single molecule of water is required to break each bond during hydrolysis. Now we are going to look at the specific monomer units that are used to build our four organic polymers. So those four polymers that made up the entire biochemical basis of life. We're starting with triglycerides. So these are one type of lipid that we study at A-level. We can see on the left there we have the triglyceride in its polymer form and on the right we are looking at the subunits that make up a triglyceride. So in this case we have one glycerol molecule and three fatty acids. As we mentioned just before, the mechanism of building polymers from monomers is condensation polymerization, so it will include the removal of water. In this case, we will have three water molecules removed per triglyceride as we are forming three new ester bonds between the glycerol and each fatty acid. We can then reverse this reaction by using water molecules to break the bonds. Again, we will need three water molecules to break each of the three new bonds. Then we will be left with our original glycerol and the three separate fatty acid chains. Next up, we have nucleic acids, so DNA or RNA. And these are the molecules that we used previously to explain the process of both condensation and hydrolysis. The monomer unit here is a nucleotide, which in turn consists of a phosphate group, a pento sugar, be it ribose or deoxyribose, and a nitrogenous base. But we will look at the structure of nucleotides further into the course. Again, we've got the same concept here. Building nucleic acids from nucleotides is a condensation reaction with the removal of water, and breaking down our nucleic acids is hydrolysis, so using water to break the bonds formed. Our third polymers are proteins. Now, proteins are extremely important molecules that carry out most of the critical roles and reactions within our bodies. So we have amino acids on the right there. They are the monomer units that make up long chain proteins or polypeptides. So the interesting thing is we actually only have 20 different varieties of amino acids. But due to the vast number of combinations that they can arrange themselves in, there's actually estimated to be around 20,000 different proteins within the human body. So again, monomers into polymer will be a series of condensation reactions. The bond between each amino acid is a peptide bond. One H2O removed per new peptide bond. And the reverse reaction, so polymer back into monomers, is hydrolysis. One H2O to break each new peptide bond. Moving on now to our fourth and final polymer, carbohydrate. So carbohydrates are long chain polymers made up of multiple monosaccharides, translated from Greek to mean single mono and sugar saccharides. So a monosaccharide is a single sugar. So molecules like glucose, fructose and galactose, they are examples of monosaccharides that you might already be familiar with. Hopefully we have the hang of it by now. So monosaccharide to carbohydrate, so monomer to polymer, we have a series of condensation reactions and then carbohydrate to monosaccharide, so polymer back to monomers, that is hydrolysis. Right, now that we have discussed all of the topic 1.1 content, it's time to check that we have mastered the points included in the AQA specification. First up, the variety of life, both past and present, is extensive, but the biochemical basis of life is similar for all living things. So that was the point we made about there being 8.7 million species on Earth, but just four organic polymers. So, yep, we've covered that one. Next up, we have monomers are the small units from which larger molecules are made. We identified the definition of monomers as being single units, so yep, we know that one. Polymers are molecules made from a large number of monomers joined together. Again, when we looked at the definition of polymers, meaning many or multiple, we identified that this must mean that they are molecules made up of single units, so yes, we've mastered that one. 
Monosaccharides, amino acids and nucleotides are example of monomers, yes, and we also looked at the example of glycerol and fatty acid being the monomer units of triglycerides or lipids. A condensation reaction joins two molecules together with the formation of a chemical bond and involves the elimination of a molecule of water. So yep, we looked into this point quite extensively. We worked through the specific process for each of our four polymers, what their monomer units were, and we reiterated throughout the fact that each new bond results in the removal of a single water molecule. And our final point on the specification is a hydrolysis reaction breaks a chemical bond between two molecules and involves the use of a water molecule. So again, we went through this hydrolysis reaction um, specific to each polymer and we identified that every time a bond is broken, we must have used a single molecule of water. So one molecule of water breaks one bond. So that's it, topic 1.1 complete. We have mastered all of the points on the specification. We've talked through each of the four organic polymers, and their subsequent monomer units, how condensation and hydrolysis reactions work, and the specific bonds formed during condensation. So the content and processes that we have learned and revised throughout topic 1.1 will be used and revisited throughout pretty much the entire syllabus. In terms of relevant exam style questions relating to this topic, there may only be one markers asking to identify a process or name a specific monomer or polymer. So this question here, name the type of reaction that joins monosaccharides together. This would, of course, be condensation.